<laughs> Hi everyone, Banthony Bantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new game album, 1992. Compton rapper, the game striking while the iron is hot on this new record over here, quickly following up his double sequel album to his big breakout album, the documentary, uh, the documentary 2, and the documentary 2.5, the latter of those two I loved, thought was fantastic. Both of these records struck me as being way more ambitious than a lot of the game's recent output, uh, some of his best music in years, so I had no reason not to look forward to this new project over here, especially since, given the title, it seemed like the game might be putting together some kind of conceptual throwback. The early 90s in California, there was really a lot to look back on socially and musically, whether it be the LA Riots, the OJ Trial, Gangsta Rap, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube were all coming out with career-defining records. Snoop Dogg's doggy style artwork actually seems to be a point of reference for the artwork on this album too. And the game does touch down on some of this stuff, especially on the opening cut where he is literally rapping in vivid detail about looting and rioting and violence as a result of the infamous Rodney King court ruling. It's over a pretty sparse beat with some Marvin Gaye samples peppered in there. It's very dreary, it's very spacious. I would say it definitely sets the tone for the record and puts a spotlight, puts an emphasis on game's lyrics. So it's great that he's delivering a retrospective on this, but I also guessed that going into this record we would hear some personal stories as well, since we're essentially going back to game's childhood on this record. And game actually goes to far beyond 1992 on the next track to tell a story about when he was born, making reference to various points in his life where blood was a key factor, then sort of relating that to his joining of the blood. Buds, all told over this grimy beat with kind of an old school flavor, some record scratches worked in there as well, but it, uh, it has this modern punch to it. So far this album is delivering what I wanted from it, a trip back to the past that feels refreshing and hard hitting, especially on Bompton, which is this banger of a track with these blurting horn samples. Game comes through with this vocal delivery that reminds me of Ice Cube a lot, although the most obvious influence on this track is uh, the very prominent DOC sample that is placed throughout the song, but then the quality of the album takes a nosedive as Game puts more of an emphasis on the nostalgia of these tracks than he does the quality of the songs that he's putting together. Like on the song Fuck Orange Juice, which is really just an interlude, and the only stunning thing or attention-grabbing thing about this song is that he's essentially rapping over the instrumental to the message from Grandmaster Flash. It seems like this track only exists to make that one musical reference that everybody's going to know. And it seems like a lot of other tracks as well only exist to sort of lazily and very blatantly work uh, a popular song sample uh, from this era of music into the song, like uh, However Do You Want It, which has a pretty prominent sample of Soul to Soul's Back to Life. And it's like this sample is the only notable thing about the beat, as the rest of the instrumental is pretty skeletal and simple. The laziest sample on the record has to be on I Grew Up on Wu-Tang, though, which uh, kicks off with uh, several dry bars from Raekwon's opening verse to Cream, and, and that's it. Like, we've, we've all heard this verse millions of times. What it adds to this song, I don't know. You didn't remix it or change it in any kind of way. It's just literally kicking the song off. And what's odd is that this track is actually one of the most underwhelming songs on the entire record. If you grew up on Wu-Tang, wouldn't you want to capture the, I don't know, the, the wild, off the wall sort of uh, aggression that Wu-Tang brought to the table that made them such an exciting group. Uh, instead, Game sort of waxes poetic on a bunch of nostalgic things on his past, uh, little of which actually has anything to do with Wu-Tang. Also, was the group even at their peak of relevance in 1992? And uh, I mean, if this is about your early life in 1992, I mean, aren't there more, I don't know, pertinent musical references that could be made? I mean, again, going back to Dr. Dre had just come out with The Chronic. And, you know, the game has made plenty of Dr. Dre references over the course of his career. Dre essentially helped put him on. But I just bring up this complaint because for an album named 1992, it doesn't really seem to have a strong sense of place or time. It's all over the place, really. All it really does have is this kind of vague sense of nostalgia that game is constantly trying to shove down the audience's throat, with no real end or point to doing so in sight. Uh, but aside from that, what's really maybe this album's biggest crime is that Game ruins the momentum of the record so early on in the track list, really from the fourth track up until 
the the corny pop rap R and B infused ballad "Baby You." Uh, this this whole chunk, this whole middle chunk of the record, is kind of a barren wasteland. There are some personal stories that I admire Game for putting together, putting to tape. These moments again seem to have little to do with the 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 build up of the intro and the title and the cover, all of which point toward a concept that Game doesn't really fulfill. The song, the soundtrack, is another cut that stands out uh, as not really fitting into the sonic, the musical vibe of the instrumental is like a flip of a Clams Casino beat, uh, a kind of instrumental vibe that I've never wanted to hear Game on top of, and it really does not work, especially with his deep voice tough talk. And uh, the, the song, Young... Uh, Don't you say it, Anthony! Friends uh, is actually a pretty heartbreaking story about a kid that Game had grown up with, uh, it seems in the tale that he tells, his mother sort of moves him into their house and starts taking care of him because uh, uh, this kid's mom was a fiend. And uh, he ends up being separated from game or they become enemies, mortal enemies, because they sort of join separate gangs and it just kind of tears their friendship apart. And the closing track, 92 Bars, definitely brings back the aggression, so the album at least ends strong. But a lot of the instrumentals, a lot of the tracks here are just kind of awkward. They're painfully mellow. And this album, in a lot of ways, reminds me of Jesus Peace, which came out a few years ago. Uh, an album that similarly had a concept, had sort of a central idea to it, or at least tried to, but when you actually listen to the entire record, you find that there are so many songs in the track list that don't really thread together thematically. Because a lot of what is on this album only deals or is related to the whole idea of 1992 uh, in a very cursory way. It's kind of disappointing because I think this album had the potential to be like another Good Kid Mad City or uh, be like the new YG album in a way. I mean, to go back to Kendrick, uh, that album had so much to say, had so much going on in it, and it was essentially just a, a day in the life of Kendrick Lamar. Game has essentially given himself an entire year to work with on this record, and yet he comes up with less to talk about, and constantly veers outside of the timeline that the album's title puts us in. And even if this album wasn't gonna be that, it could have at least been a successful and a tasteful throwback, because I at least trust Game to effectively take us back to that time, because he had more experience within that time uh, to kind of make it come alive for a new audience, but that doesn't even really happen either, at least uh, not for more than a couple tracks. This album is at least listenable. There were only a handful of tracks that I just could not stand and had to just completely avoid outright, but uh, really a lost opportunity, unfortunately. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this LP transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and uh, please don't cry, though you can leave an angry comment in the comments if you like. All sorts of links next to my head, other videos, subscription, YouTube, and when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification button so you get notified forever.